everyone welcome back to winging it we're in week 11 of our garden quilt project we are making a garden themed quilt one block each week and we are working towards a complete quilt topper that we can put together at the end of the year if you haven't seen any of the other videos in this series so far don't worry i will link a playlist at the top of the screen so you can go back and catch up and if you don't want to make a complete quilt there are lots of other ways that you can use the ideas in these videos so the aim is just to give you a little bit of inspiration learn some new techniques and create some textile art in simple ways with needle thread and fabric now today we're going to learn a new technique called needle turned applique and we are going to work on this green background it's a lot less blue than it appears on screen it's much brighter green than it looks and I've got a 20 centimeter square here that is going to form the base of my panel I've got some embroidery threads as well so I've got anchor 683 that's my darkest green I've got anchor 258 which is a mid green and 255 which is a lighter green and then I've got a few shades of yellow so I've got anchor 300 which is my pale yellow anchor 298 which is my bright yellow and 444 is my darkest yellow I've got a range of marking tools as well so I've got a couple of colors of heat erase pen and my pencil handy and I've also got some machine cotton that's going to come in useful a bit later I've got my embroidery scissors and my paper scissors I don't think I'll use those very much today and finally I've got some yellow fabrics now these are all off cuts from previous blocks that we've cut and so I've got a plain a spot a stripe and a floral and we're going to use these to create some daffodils this week it's March I noticed the other day that my first daffodils have come up in my garden and I thought we could take some inspiration from that in this block so I've already used my light box to transfer the pattern onto my fabric and I've marked in a one centimetre seam allowance and if you're not confident in sketching these out I do have a pattern for this week you can download it on our website and I'll put the address at the bottom of the screen and I'll also put a link in the description below. It costs £1 to download it and it's just to help me keep this channel running and cover some of the costs involved in making these videos. So all I've done to transfer this design is I've put my pattern on a light box and lined up my square over the top and I've used a white heat erase pen to just go around all of the outlines so that they're nice and secure and so now what I'm going to do is cut out my shapes so I've brought my light box back in if you don't have a light box just hold up your fabric and template to the window and it works just as well it's just awkward for me to do that while I'm filming so I tend to use a light box so that you can see what I'm doing so what we want is to be able to get a border all the way around the outside of our shape so I've just laid my scrap of yellow there and I've got a heat erase pen and I'm just going to trace the outline of my flower shape you can see that I'm doing little motions there and that's because when you're working on fabric you do get a much neater line rather than just dragging at the fabric you'll get a funny shape if you don't take your pen off the fabric every now and again so now I've got a second colour and that's going to help me determine which line is which and I'm just going to freehand a border around the outside of that so about half a centimetre away from my blue line I'm adding a pink line and I'm going to cut out my shape following that pink line I'm using my embroidery scissors quite a few points on this one so it will really help if you've got some scissors that are sharp right to the point and that will help you get into all the little spaces and as always turn the fabric and not your scissors now any scraps are going to go into my scraps box they're going to come in useful later on in our quilt we don't waste anything if we can help it 
Now my mid yellow is the one that best matches my fabric here and so I'm just going to cut a length of that and I'm going to separate out just a single strand and I do that by just pinching it lightly between my fingers making sure the thread is laying it out straight and I get one strand and just pull directly out so in just one smooth motion I'm just going to pull that single strand and the thread will gather up in my hand but it won't have any knots in it and you can just straighten that back out and pull out another strand in the same way and I'm just going to start it off I'm halfway down the side there and I'm just going to pull my needle through on that blue line just so that we've got it started and that knot is going to be caught inside now you don't have to match up the daftal exactly but it helps if you do because the white lines that are on your base fabric are going to help you with your needle turning so I'm just trying to work out which way around my daffodil should go and I'm just checking by lifting up the sides there to make sure it's lined up with my white lines and then I'm just going to pin it in place I'm not going to go overboard with these pins I'm just going to put three in go and get different angles and I want to make sure that they're not too close to those blue lines that I've drawn in because we need the edges of our shape to be free for us to turn under that border. Now there's a lot of points and curves and so when we're handling points and curves we need to make some snips so I'm going to get my scissors into that internal point there and I'm just going to snip down so that it's just a couple of threads away from my blue outline and that will allow the fabric to be manipulated and turn under to make sharp points and corners and because this petal is curved I'm also going to put a couple of snips just along the edge to help me get that curve now needle turned up in EK can be quite fiddly but it's actually very simple and all you do is just fold under those tabs that we've just created and you can use your needle just coming a bit closer here you can use your needle to pull that border underneath your shape so that you are turned under right up to the line now my thread is already coming out of the yellow fabric and so what I'm going to do is rest my needle right against the edge of that fold so I've got a neat turned under edge now and I'm going to tuck my needle in as closely as I can get it and take it back through just the green fabric so I've come up through the green and yellow and I'm going down just through the green so we're effectively doing an applique stitch here but we're turning under the edges of our fabric shape as we go along so now I'll come along a little bit further and bring my needle back up through the yellow and the green and take it back down just through the green again so these little catching stitches that just go over the edge are going to help keep our shape in place they're going to secure it to the backing but they're also going to hold that turn under in place as well so once you've got one tab complete you then use your needle to turn under the next little tab and then you can carry on stitching the edge with your applique stitch in exactly the same way and you can see me there just poking the edges under until I am lined up with the blue line so my blue outline of my shape should be at the very edge of my flower and that will make sure that I've I've got the actual shape that I've drawn so once you've got going it does speed up starting off is always the hardest thing now in that internal corner I want to make sure it doesn't fray so I'm going to put a little stitch right into the corner there to hold the fabric in place and then I can start moving up the next petal so I'm going to put a little snip halfway up to help me get that curve 
I'm using the very tips of my scissors there and I'm going almost down to the blue line but just ever so slightly away from it so we're talking just individual threads of the weave of the yellow fabric really we want to get as close as we can then I can turn under my next side I'm kind of finger pressing it as I go and I'm using my needle there to just hold it in place while I position myself to sew so now we're on our second side we're going up through both layers of fabric and we're going to tuck our needle right in any frayed little fibers we can just tuck under with the tip of our needle and then go back down just through the green to hold that shape in place you can just see there that the white line is visible on the green fabric and that's helping me it's like my fail safe so I've got my blue line on the yellow fabric that's my guide for where I turn under but the white line on the green is my guide for where to stitch and so it does really help to have both of those outlines visible so that you can make sure your shapes end up exactly correct so I'm just going to work my way up this side here and now I've got my end piece and I want to make sure that my turned under edge is in line with the very tip of that petal so I want to fold under right across the top point until I get to the very pointy tip and I want a stitch that is right at the point there now I'm going to snip into the next internal corner and along the side you can cut across the tip if you want to just to take a little bit of bulk out but I've just turned it there haven't cut any away I've just made sure the fold goes into a sharp point at the end of the petal so that I've got a really nicely shaped pointy petal and then once you're around the tip of the petal you can just carry on and work all the way around the flower in the same way now we're going to put the stem in you probably can see I've got some surface embroidery on there I did do some feather stitch but I decided I didn't like it so I'm not going to talk about that too much because it's going to disappear shortly to do our stems we're going to do a combination of chain stitch and back stitch and so I've brought my needle through tucked into the internal point on that flower I've taken my needle back down the same hole where it came out and that's created a loop and then I bring my needle up a stitch length down making sure that the needle comes up inside that loop when I pull through it pulls the stitch into a teardrop shape so again I'm going back down the same hole where my thread comes out and I'm coming up a little further down the line inside the loop to pull through and once again I'm going to go back down the same hole rock my needle forward so that it comes out inside the loop and I just carry on all the way down the stem making a chain so all the stitches are connected together Now when we get to the end of our chain we just hop over the loop that we've caught there so we take our needle down on the other side of the loop and that puts a little anchor stitch in to hold our last loop in place then we can finish our thread off on the back and that's our chain stitch now I'm going to back stitch inside these loops so I've got my darker green here these are both stitched in two strands of embroidery thread and I've brought my thread up in the middle of that second loop up from the bottom of the stem and I'm coming back down in the middle of that first loop and it creates a little bar joining up those two chains now I bring my needle up in the third loop along and come back to meet that previous stitch in the middle of the second loop. Then I come up in the fourth loop 
and take my needle back down in the middle of the third loop. So I'm doing back stitch, but I'm making sure that my stitches line up carefully with the chain stitches that I've just done. So each stitch begins right in the middle of the chain and we're going to work all the way up the stem putting in those back stitches and it ends up looking like there are chain links facing away from us so some of them we see side on and others we see end on so that's our stem now we're going to work on the trumpet of our daffodil and to do this we're going to make some Suffolk puffs you might call these yo-yos this is what we're going to make they are really simple and lovely looking things they look a little bit like shower caps and you can use them flat like that but I much prefer to use the open side that has got this sort of gathered ring in the center so I'm just going to show you how to make one of those that Suffolk puff that I've just shown you is the one for the right hand flower and you can see that it fits perfectly in the center of that daffodil now to make this we need a much much bigger circle because we're folding our fabric in on itself and so it's quite surprising how big a circle you need now this week's pattern has got a second sheet and it's got the circles that you need to make the right size of foot puff so this one was the right hand circle and you can see it's twice the diameter of the finished Suffolk puff and so I'm just going to magically go back in time and show you the process of me making it so just got my fabric there on my light box and I'm just drawing around that circle and then I cut it out and again you'll see I'm turning the fabric not the scissors and that gives me a nice smooth outline and now what I want to do is just fold over a little edge there. So I'm just turning in the edge ever so slightly. So I've got the wrong side of the fabric facing me, the pattern side away, and I'm just turning over the patterned edge onto the wrong side of the fabric. And I've just got some machine cotton here and I'm going to work around the edge with a running stitch. So I'm just taking my needle down through both layers of fabric and up again a little bit further along and then every now and again I'm just going to keep turning in the edge so that I've got a little hem. So I'm just going to work all the way around with my running stitch. You can, once you've got going, you can rock the fabric so that you can get several stitches onto your needle all at the same time. I'm going slowly here so that you can see what I'm doing but you can see now that I've started rocking the fabric back and forwards so that I'm catching it onto the needle and I'm making several stitches at once. I'm only turning over about half a centimetre there so don't go overboard otherwise your Suffolk puff will be too small. I'm just gradually working all the way around until I get back to the start and I've got complete turned edge. And now we don't want to finish off our thread because we're going to pull on it. You can see that I'm just allowing the fabric there to gather in on itself. It's really important that you don't pull it too hard because you really don't want your thread to break. If your thread breaks, you have to start again. You need to pull as much as you can until it won't pull anymore. So it's just about taking things steady and allowing the fabric to guide you a little bit. Once it won't pull anymore, that's because there is no more space. All the fabric is so tightly packed that there's no there's no more space for any more thread to come out. So once you've got it to that point, you can then do a quilter's knot right up close to the fabric surface and cut off your thread. And that really is all there is to it. I'm just going to just ease that out and make sure that it's circular and I don't have any folded bits. And that's our finished Suffolk puff. Really cute, really easy. Full disclosure, I forgot to film myself sewing it on, but I've just stitched it on there with an applique stitch and I've put in all of the other needle turned 
pieces and the other two Suffolk puffs and the two stems. And if I bring it up close, you can see I've put some decorative stitching on these. So I've put a blanket stitch around the edge and chain stitch around the centre. And I thought I'd just show you how I've gone about the blanket stitch because this is quite an interesting shape to put blanket stitch on because of all the corners. Now I had a comment the other day talking about the fact that I work my blanket stitch from left to right instead of right to left, which is unusual for a right hander. And I think it's because my mum is a left hander and taught me a lot of my stitches and she taught me the way that she did it, which is the left handed way. So that's probably why, but I'm going to try and work it right to left this time. So I've got two strands of one of my yellows here and I've just brought my thread up right at the edge of the flower. And when we're doing blanket stitch, we need to imagine that we're working with some little squares or rectangles. My thread there is on the top right corner of a little square. I want to take my thread round it in a loop and come down to the diagonally opposite corner of the square. So I'm going down to the bottom left corner of the square. That's where my needle goes back in and I'm going to rock it forward so that it comes back out on the top left corner of my square right at the edge of the flower and I want to make sure that my working thread is passing underneath that needle point and when I pull through that working thread is going to catch my loop and pull it into a right angle that sits right along the edge of my petal there and so now I'm going to do the same thing again. So I've got my loop. I'm going down at the bottom left corner, up at the top left corner at the edge of the petal and through the loop. And so we've got now some joined right angled stitches. And that basically is essentially blanket stitch. Now we want to work around this point here and we're going to do that by making a little trio of stitches. So I want to find the point that is equally distant from both sides of the petal and the point of the petal. And that is where my needle goes down. And I'm going to come out on that first side where I've been working just like I have done before and create a stitch. But now I'm going to take my needle back down in exactly the same point again. So where that previous stitch started, I'm going to go back down the same hole. And this time I'm going to bring my needle out at the very point of the petal and inside that loop and pull through. And I want to pull in the direction that the point is facing. So I'm pulling directly up there and out away from the petal. Now I'm going to take my needle back down in the same hole again. So I'm going to start my third stitch in the same hole. So back down that hole and out on the new side. So I've worked my way around a corner. We've pivoted around that point of the petal. And now I'm on my new side and I can carry on stitching in exactly the same way as if nothing happened. So that's an external corner, but now I've got an internal corner and this time we are going to do three stitches again, but we're going to pivot around that internal point. So I've made a stitch that comes up in the very sort of corner of that point. Now I'm making a stitch that starts vertically down from that point. So when we go around an external corner, we pivot around the vertical part of the stitch. And when we're going around an internal corner, we're pivoting around the horizontal part of the stitch where the loop is caught. And now I'm going to put my third stitch on the next side. So I'm still coming out at that very corner, but now I'm on the new petal. And so I can carry on stitching as though nothing happened along my new side. So whenever we're turning corners with blanket stitch, it's the, the neatest finish is gained by making three stitches that pivot around the corner 
whether it's internal or external. So I'm just going to stitch around the outside of my flower there and I'm going to run out of thread. Now I could carry on for another couple of stitches but that's going to put me right in the corner so I'm going to finish my thread here and I thought it would be good to show you how to finish a thread and start a new one so that you get an invisible join. So I'm going to take my needle over that loop that I've caught and down back through the fabric making a little anchor stitch just like we did with our chain stitch and then I finish my thread off on the back. Now I use anchor threads and I thought it was high time I showed you how to use a skein. Again we haven't done this for ages. Now with anchor threads you always pull from the logo end where the anchor is. If you're using DMC it's the number end so you just need to make sure that you're using the right technique for the right brand of thread and you want to make sure you've got the end that is coming from right inside the skein and if you've got that you can just loosely hold the skein in your non-dominant hand and just pull there'll be natural points where the thread goes slack and that's i think a really good guide for the length of thread that you need so then you can separate out your two strands and start your new thread so this time i'm going to bring my needle up inside that last stitch so tucked right inside the right angle of the stitch as though this is the thread that is holding that stitch in the right angle and it will give the illusion of a continuous thread so now I'm going to stitch around my trumpet we're going to do this with a chain stitch I've already shown you chain stitch you work it in exactly the same way when you're working in a circle so we've brought our thread up we're going back down in the same hole where the thread's coming out and then we rock forward a stitch length and come back out of the fabric making sure the loop passes underneath the needle and we're going to pull that through and that creates our chain stitch and we just keep repeating that all the way around our shape So we're back at the beginning and we want to make sure that our spacing leaves one stitch length between our penultimate stitch and the very first stitch that we started with. And this time, instead of going back through the fabric, we're going to slide our needle underneath that first chain stitch. And pull it round and then we go back down the hole and that will give the illusion that there is no beginning or end to these stitches so if I hold it up there you should be able to see that that is a continuous line of chain stitches so that's how we can make seamless circular stitching I'm just going to give my panel a quick press with my iron and I'm working face down because the sponginess of my ironing pad is going to take some of the relief of the fabric on the surface and won't crush it completely. So here's our finished block for this week, our daffodil block. This is a great example of why it's important to trust the process because I was really not sure about this one as it was going along and I just kept going and I actually quite like it. I think it's quite striking and we've learned some new techniques today. So I hope you've enjoyed that if you have please do give us a like we really appreciate it it helps us out and helps other people find our channel do share your work at hashtag fsh23quilt and so that we can see all our daffodil pieces together you can also add hashtag fsh23quilt11 i can't wait to see what you come up with with this panel if you have enjoyed this and would like a similar project, I will link a video down here and I'll put a video up here that's best for you. If you'd like to subscribe, we'd love to have you as part of our community. Just click on the logo down here and it makes it really easy for you. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great week and I will see you in the next video.
bye.